Hey, what's up, Craig? Tell me why you got into lifting. Uh, I just wanted to get bigger and stronger because I was always a skinny kid. Um, like the way the guys looked in the magazines, even though I knew uh, I was never going to look like them because I was never going to use what they were using to get there. But originally it was just to get, um, just put on size, get a little bigger, get a little stronger. I got tired of, you know, not being able to pick up certain pieces of furniture or, you know, help people move things or not being able to do 10 push ups in a row or anything like that. So, you know, and also it's like a self confidence thing to look better, feel better, feel more confident about myself. Um, you know, maybe eventually at some point attract more girls to me, that type of stuff. So what would, what kind of advice would you give to someone who's thinking about bodybuilding? They're kind of on the fence. What would be your sort of initial advice? Um, if you're considering bodybuilding one, I, I suggest that if you really don't have any clue about training or nutrition, um, to find a coach and I'm not telling you to go find the most expensive coach out there. Um, there are very good options, you know, uh, affordable options, decent coaches out there that'll, you know, get you good results. But, you know, especially with a coach, you want to make sure that they have a good wealth of knowledge. Uh, they know a bunch of different ways to get you to the same point. They're familiar with a lot of different training methods. They're familiar with a lot of different uh, nutrition protocols, especially for your body type, because the way I respond to things is not necessarily the same way John responds to things the same way as somebody else doesn't necessarily respond the same uh, the same way to things. So like for instance, I'm good at protein and fat. Carbs are my weak point. John does well with carbs. I don't. Um, it's something I'm working on, but it's just the way my body works. So if you're really considering doing it, you either have to be all in or all out. That's another thing. Um, if you're really going to do it, expect that it's going to be hard work. The results are going to take time. You may not get it right the first time, the second time, or even the fifth time. It's just you're going to have to keep going back into the gym, once again, getting your nutrition in line, experimenting with different training protocols, figure out what's working best for your body, um, build up your weak points, because there aren't many people that are just gifted with you know perfect muscular genetics. So, for instance, my upper body's great. My lower body needs, my legs need work. So I work a lot more on my legs than I do my upper body, because my upper body's easier to develop. My legs take a lot more time. That's also... I'm also taller, so <laughs> to make your legs look really big when you're six foot one, not that easy. And granted, there are bodybuilders out there who are taller than me, but it just takes time. Um, be realistic, and also expect that when you go down the cut, nobody wants to listen to you to whine and complain about how much it sucks to cut. You chose to do it. Be a big boy or a big girl. Suck it up. Um, it's a sacrifice we all make. You know, it's very easy to be in the off season and be whatever weight, but when you get to stage weight. You know, there's a lot of sacrificing. There's a lot of your diet has to be spot on. There's going to be times where you're dead tired and you don't want to train and you're going to have to train. So I know you did two bodybuilding shows and when you did them, you actually pro carded in both shows. Yep. And I also know that you were a very demanding life. Uh, you have a very demanding job and you commute a lot. And when you were competing, you were also doing your MBA in the beginning at least. Um, and you're married. Uh, you know, you try to keep up with your home and everything. So can you give maybe a couple of pointers to people about some things you do to find balance as well as kind of streamline some of your prep and things that you have to do when you're a uh, contest, you know, build a, you're, you're in a contest prep for uh, bodybuilding? Well, whenever you're in contest prep, always be prepared for it not to be perfect. Um, if you have a life and you have a job and you have other things going on and you're just, you know, not being paid to just train... <laughs> Um, and you're not going to travel anywhere or do anything else. Uh, you know, things are going to come up. It's going to be unexpected. That's the way life is. So, I mean, at least for my prep, you know, I had a good coach who was on top of me, and then I was I was always in contact with him. Aww. I was. You and I were always talking. Yep. Um, to make sure that I was always on point. If, if something didn't look right or I didn't feel right or, you know, my body was reacting weird that day, we'd talk about it um, just to make sure that we didn't need to change anything. Uh, you know, some people just go and do whatever they want, but I, I'm a little, I wanted to do well, so I was a lot more in contact with my coach. But in terms of cooking and dieting and getting my nutrition in line, I bulk, you know, Gina and I, we, we bulk cook, um, which is anybody who competes, that's what you should be doing. If you're going to do a bodybuilding show and you're going to prep and you're going to diet down, you should be bulk cooking at least once or twice a week. That way you have your chicken steak, um, your tuna, your turkey, whatever preference you have of protein, uh, vegetables cooked up, 
um, your carb sources, whatever they're going to be, whether it's sweet potato, oatmeal, all that kind of stuff, you kind of have it ready. Um, and if you can, if you have it all ready, then all you really have to do is measure it out and put it into your containers, and then you're set to go. It makes life a lot easier. Um, it's a lot less thought. It's a lot less, I'm on the road, what the hell am I going to eat? Um, I can't go to Mickey D's. I can't really stop at a restaurant because I don't know how much everything weighs or the, the, the actual macronutrients that I'm going to be taking in during that meal. Um, and restaurants can be sneaky. Uh, <laughs> You know that, and I know that where they'll say one thing, but it's really not as true as they make it out to be. Be prepared to add more fat to your meals. Yeah, exactly. They you know, smother everything in fat. That, or they, they smother it in salt, or whatever the case may be. So, that's one way at least to get your meals ready, especially if you're traveling or you're working. Bring your meals with you so you never have to worry about going out. Um, in terms of having other responsibilities in life, you just have to be good with time management. So, for instance, you know, I work over 40 hours a week. Now with commute, it's probably like 60 hours a week. Um, my MBA, I've kind of, I've backed off a little bit just because I'm getting accustomed to the new commute. Um, I know I can get my MBA back in there. It's just a matter of prioritizing how I'm going to fit it in. I'm not saying I can't. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to go about it. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of just say, okay, I have this much time for this. I have this much time for that. Um, when I get home, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. You know, on the weekends, I try to make sure that I make plans with my wife because otherwise she'll hate me. Um, <laughs> you know, we can still go to the movies. We can still go out to a restaurant. You know, sometimes I may even bring my food into that restaurant, whether they like it or not. I really don't give a crap. Um, or I'll just try to find something on the menu that I definitely know, for instance, fits into my macros. Like grilled chicken and steak, you can pretty much get anywhere. Um, then you just need to figure out how much of it you ate. You know, and you can get it grilled with nothing on it. It's, and you can bring your scale in with you. And you can bring your scale in with you. But sometimes they'll tell you right on the menu, it's like it's a 12-ounce steak. Right. You'll know. Um, so in terms of life balance, it, it, it's definitely a tightrope act, but you have to be careful not to let bodybuilding dominate everything. Uh, I keep telling people that, yeah, you, you want to compete, you want to come in the best, but at the same time, if you're not careful, you're going to kind of alienate yourself, you're going to end up pissing off a lot of people, nobody's going to want to be around you, you're going to be excluded from a lot of activities, things like that. I mean, for me, I think one of my greatest assets is I'm very good with time management, um, and I'm also extremely flexible and adapting to any situation that comes up. So, you know, like for instance, this weekend, now I'm only in my off season, but I'm still very, very serious, I'm still very, very on point with everything that I'm trying to do with my training. Um, you know, I, I really was not feeling well on Monday. I uh, decided to skip the session because I knew it, it just wasn't going to work and I wasn't going to have a quality workout of any any sort. So I rearranged everything. So I got all of my workouts in this week and, you know, saved my one workout for Saturday. And then today I have an off day because now I got everything in. Um, you know, we didn't show any video of this, but John had a, had a cooler filled with his food so he can stay on point. Uh, I brought my six-pack fitness so that all day yesterday I could pretty much stay on point. And then I had a little bit of a cheat meal at the end of the day, and I earned it because if John can vouch for me, I busted my ass in the gym yesterday. I was raging through some weights. Um, you know, I had a couple slices of pizza, not a whole pie, just a couple slices, and then uh, like a piece of bread. That was really, that was my huge, glorious cheat meal. And then today, you know, we went to IHOP. I had uh, an omelet, kind of got myself back on point. Uh, I've had a protein shake, I have Quest Bars, things just so that I don't fall apart or get too far off track and then kind of have to cut back this week. Uh, two miles. Just try to be, just Take be exit able to plan and be able to adapt. Five so north 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 no prep is ever perfect, trust me, it's not. There's just Life will always find a way to surprise you and get in the way. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. We'll do some more soon.